You know, uh, it is not as if we haven't tried to, to, to go the negotiating route, or negotiate a deal route, the sanction route. Does any of this ring a bell? This agreement is good for the United States, good for our allies, and good for the safety of the entire world. It reduces the danger of the threat of nuclear spreading in the region. The Iran nuclear deal solves a specific problem, which is making sure that they don't possess a nuclear weapon. And it's our best way to do that. Bill Clinton talking about a, a deal he thought was, was a done deal and a safe deal and a peaceful deal with the North Koreans, 1994. Fast forward to this president talking about a deal he thinks is a good deal, a safe deal, a promising deal with the Iranians in 2015, now to 2016. Ambassador Robert Gallucci negotiated that North Korean deal. What does he make of what's going on now? Let's ask him. What do you think, Ambassador? It's good to be with you. Same here. What do you think of what's going on with North Korea? Do you think they detonated a hydrogen bomb, first off? Uh, good question. Uh, I think most of the experts who have looked at this uh, that I've, I've uh, seen writing on, on the subject would say probably not that a true thermonuclear weapon, multi-stage weapon, is probably beyond what the North could do. But uh, let me know when your eyes begin to water. Uh, what is much more likely is that they got what's called some thermonuclear burn. In other words, they got some fusion of light isotopes of hydrogen, which produced a little bit of energy and a lot of neutrons, which caused more fission. So it was mostly probably mostly a fission device with what's called some boosting which gave it a little more yield but still I think you've noted this Admiral Fallon noted this not much yield so uh, I, I don't think this is something to hyperventilate over uh, even if it were a thermonuclear weapon and I don't think it was uh, what we'd be talking about is uh, the potential for a design to produce a much larger bomb than can be produced with simple fission but the key here is whether the North is deterred. In other words, is the American nuclear posture one that can deter the North from using nuclear weapons in virtually any contingency? Well, what do you think? think? Do you, think, do, do you that, think that our answer here is that we are not up to that task? We can't control what's going on? What? No, no. I, I, I firmly believe that our deterrent posture is a good and strong one. I think we have the strongest military on the planet capable of projecting force with incredible lethality and precision right up to the nuclear level. And I think not only do the North Koreans understand this, but just as important, our allies in Tokyo and Seoul understand that our extended deterrent to the, those countries is also still viable. Well, it might be, and, Ambassador, and you're the expert on this, but I just read and connect a lot of events. If the bad guys are intimidated or the North Koreans are intimidated, they certainly have a funny way of showing it. And I, I wonder now, with Hillary Clinton on the wire saying the U.S. should and the U.N. should oppose additional immediate sanctions on North Korea, and all these sanctions over all these years have not done the trick, or in prior deals the North Koreans have found a way to wiggle around them in a Democratic and Republican administrations alike, then what do we do? Look, it's been 20 years uh, since uh, I negotiated or headed the negotiating team with North Korea on what I think was a good deal at the time. I mean, these things are all relative. Uh, we, wars are not pure, simple, and good, and neither are all negotiations. The question is, are you better off with the negotiation or not having the negotiation or the deal? Not whether you can imagine some better outcome. Yeah, but if you think about it, that negotiation was about them not getting this stuff, right? And I, no offense to you, sir, they got this stuff or something close to this stuff. So it makes people wonder whether we were hoodwinked. No, we weren't hoodwinked. We knew at the time uh, that we had a good chance of stopping that program for a while and maybe a long time. So for 11 years or more, actually more than that, we did stop the program. And eventually the North Koreans cheated on the deal. Uh, and during the George W. Bush administration, they tested their first of what now is four nuclear weapons. So, so you're, you're, it, not, you're it blaming this on the Bush while. administration? Say again, please. You're blaming this on the Bush administration? You I'm did not the deal. Blaming it. I, I'm not blaming the, the North Korean 
activity on anyone but North Koreans. Right. They are the outlaws here. And what we're talking about are rational ways of dealing with that and what you can expect of the United States of America at any time. If we wanted to use force, could we crush this country? Yes. Is that the right thing to do? No. Well, uh, so obviously, we try to do we're, we're, the, we're the world's premier power. Everyone knows we could cross other countries if we wanted to do so. I guess what I'm saying here and wondering about is whether the North Korean situation brings to mind the Iranian deal. And you said when you crafted at the time, you had assurances that certainly in the near term, we had stopped whatever they were doing 10 years out or whatever. They, they obviously were doing other things. Who's to say that the Iranians haven't cobbled together the same sort of strategy and aren't doing the same thing? Well, that's why you have transparency provisions, that's why you do inspections, and you do the best you can with these deals. I don't think anyone who's been involved in negotiating with a country like Iran or a country like North Korea is going to say you have a foolproof deal. The question is, are you better off making the deal? Do you Our think judgment... we're better off? To... Seriously, I mean, do you think we're better off now, thanks to your efforts, and you worked your piney off, I take nothing away from that, but that we're better off now as a result of what you did then? There's absolutely no question in my mind. By the year 2000, had we not done the deal, the intelligence community estimated the North would have about 100 nuclear weapons. This is now 20 years later, and we're talking about them having maybe 10. So but I you think don't know that was that. a very good deal. You don't know deal. that, right? I mean, hey, no way to know that. <laughs> What we know depends upon what our intelligence community right. can find out. And to the best of our knowledge, and I can say that, we are m way better off because we made a deal then. Uh, better the off than we would have had we deal not. Then, but, uh, sir, the auspices of that deal then was that North Korea would not ever be in this position. Maybe I misread it at the time. Maybe others misread it at the time. We played a bite from President Clinton at the time that seemed to indicate we had stopped North Korea down this path. And now, uh, they're down this path. You know, there is no stop. There is a delay. There could be political changes yeah. that produce stop. But you can't guarantee a stop for all time. The, again, I tell you, the question you should ask about any deal is, are we going to be better off if we make the deal? Can we monitor it? Will we find out if they cheat? Those are the kind of questions you should ask in the real world. All right, well, so we couldn't monitor this one because later or years later they did cheat, presumably. Um, with, this, with this Iranian deal, we're told the same thing. We can monitor them if they're cheating. I have my doubts. Assure me that um, I'm wrong. What do you think? Well, I think the answer is that we did catch them, the North Koreans, that is, yeah. when they were cheating. We caught them in the 90s. The Bush administration, was, when they came into office, was aware of this, and then they ultimately went to the North Koreans uh, in a second year and said, this has got to stop. And eventually the agreement collapsed. But it collapsed because of what the North Koreans did. For a long time, what they I'm were asking held you, in place. Do you think the Iranians are doing the same thing with us? I, at, at this moment, I heard you say that, we th that there was material breaches already of the deal. I am unaware of material breaches of the, of the deal. I, I'd have to find out about that. To the best of my knowledge right now, we are still in the opening days of having this deal implemented. Okay. And we have to monitor it. All right. No question. Ambassador, thank you very much for taking the time. Thank you.